Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 4,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 110 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at Powerslam.tv. The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Welcome everyone to episode 21 of your favorite podcast about all things elite. Welcome to all things elite. I am your host, your I am your host Floyd Johnson, and with me today as a special guest host is he's on my other podcast around the ring. It is my friend Ryan Aaron. How you doing today, Ryan? I'm doing really good, sir. Doing really good. All right, so this episode's coming a little late, and so let me explain a couple things. We are in Dallas for G1 and Slammiversary. Uh, I was supposed to record this show Friday. Uh, there was some scheduling conflict, so we couldn't get it off. And I decided I really wanted to, since Fight for the Fallen is next week, and I will be uh, doing the episode, I will be doing Fight for the Fallen uh after show next week's episode will come after the show i was like it was important to not go a week but in between episodes thing is ryan is on a cell phone in uh another part of the room and well he's in the bathroom and if you happen to pick me up i talk loud so if you might pick me up twice i do apologize i did want to get this episode out but i am going to do my best to let you know all of the pitfalls that you might fall into, uh, this was supposed to be done in a different situation. My setup is not to record two people at the same time. So, But we have, uh, we're have we in Dallas this weekend. Uh, we've had a great weekend. We got in Saturday. Uh, we got in Saturday, and we went to straight to the – Not everyone, we didn't make it in time for the press conference, but we went to the meet and greets. All they had left was Juice Robinson, so we got a meet and greet to meet Juice Robinson. Uh, we got checked into our hotel, and then we met up with the guys from Super J Cast, their Discord. Uh, how'd you enjoy that, Ryan? That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, it was. And the the arcade was really cool. All right. Yeah, we so the couple places we went. First place we went which was to like a Mexican taco, like a taco, taqueria or whatever. And we went there. To, uh, they had some street tacos. They were expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was like, uh, you know, we're from Oklahoma. Mexican food's kind of popular there. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's super great or quality. I enjoy it. But, like, to get, like, what we got at this place in Texas – it might have been ten bucks, maybe, and it was quite a bit more expensive than that. But it was really, it was tasty. They filled the tacos pretty well, and then after we got to meet Damon, and well, Brian got to meet Damon from the Super J Cast. I had met him previously, met up with Jeremy and Josh from this channel, the Social Suplex, and a bunch of other people in there, and we talked and we hung out, and then they were like, "Hey, do you like cider?" Do you like video games? We're going to drink cider and play video games. 
So we went to the cider place down the road. And that's exactly what we did. We, uh, it was like you paid admission to get in, uh, you ordered a drink, and then you play video games. And uh, the cider, the stuff that they were, it was all home, you know, home brewed or in it, brewed in house, and they had different flavors. I had this apple pineapple one, delicious. What that was you, really good. <laughs> yeah, but it had the old school arcade games. It was a really, it was a really good time. It was like, it's something I would do if I had like a niece or nephew that I could uh, take out, and they wanted to go do this all day. That would be fun. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we have one in Oklahoma City. I don't know. It's a little bit different than this one, but and they, they, this one had way more games than the one in Oklahoma City. So it was really cool. I think uh, Floyd and I we beat a. The X Men arcade, we beat Turtles arcade, played a couple others. Let me tell you, and it was like when we were young, those games felt so felt so long. But when you have unlimited lives, they're about fifteen minutes of gameplay. Yeah, maybe twenty, <laughs> and then they're they're over. I'm talking beginning to the end. They're about twenty minutes of gameplay. So uh, yeah, that's about all it took for X Men. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, but we got to, to hang around and play a lot of things. Uh, I had had a really long day, so we left a little earlier. Uh, we were left a little earlier in the day and, uh, we went back to the hotel, but yeah, it was a really good time. Uh, I know if you're listening to all things elite, you're ready to hear some stuff about the elite. So I'm going to jump into that. But, uh, yesterday we did go to the G1 uh great live show uh was very impressive best probably best in-ring work in the world uh we got to see tanahashi versus omega uh it was great people popped for will osprey if you want to hear more about our experiences we will be discussing it on our show called around the ring uh you can definitely on all your podcast areas find around the ring and uh, follow our page. It comes generally comes out on Sunday, so literally this is when we would like generally we're recording around the ring. But we're gonna do this for all things elite today. But yeah, we had a good time. We're gonna go in depth about everything we did, all the matches, give our reviews and stuff on that show. But let's talk about the elite, Ryan. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to start off uh we're going to start off this week. It's going to be a fairly short episode. Uh it's going to be basically a recap of uh BTE, a recap of Road to Fight to Fallen 2 and then we're going to kind of review the matches that they've announced for Fight for the Fallen. Uh Ryan, as you said, we checked before the show. You've watched all the episodes, that, right? Yes. And he heard me as I was watching the episodes right before this show to try to get ready to talk about it because at this point it's been damn near a week since uh, I watched any of it. So, of course, it is not fresh on my mind. Uh, It actually, there was uh, one scene that upset me this week and the week actually gave me time to get over it. Then I watched it again this week and I'm fired up again. So, (laughs) so, uh... Yeah, so when it it was episode one fifty nine, and it was simply titled "Backstage at Fighter Fest," which, you know, it's pretty simple because most of the stuff came from backstage at Fighter Fest. Uh, pretty much, I got the cl- uh, the Cliff Notes version. Uh, so first thing we get is a recreation of the uh, baggage scene from Fighter Fest. What happened in what happened is Kenny's standing in the ring, and he's like. Half the bags are here. Uh, you see, uh, you see, uh, private party on the outside. They actually get some speaking lines, and they're like, "My medicine's in there." And he's like, "Well, half the bags are here. The other half is on the way." I mean, literally straight from the uh, movie. Uh, they all rush in to get their bags, and they get their bags, and then they start claiming. They 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 rush to claim tents. 
And uh, the first thing we see after the bag is CD goes to a tent and uh, tries to get in. And it looks like it's Trent Beretta doing something to Chuck E.T. with pills and, uh, pills. and he's angry and he tells him to go away. And uh, CD uh, scampers off. What did you think about uh, – had you ever seen the Fire Fest, uh, Fire Fest documentary, sir? I have not. What? How can you have not seen that, sir? It, I have no idea. You know, the only reason I have seen it, and I'm going to be 100% honest, is I do work overnights at my job, so I get to watch a lot of stuff. Normally, I would have never watched. I would have never even heard of this if it wasn't for my schedule. But uh, like I said, it was like some that was seen right out, right out of that movie. Uh, then... And like I said, I'm not going to order. I'm just hitting up bullet points. We see the Bucks, and they're at DFW Airport. There's some flight delays, and it's uh, Matt talking, and he says they brought Mrs. Matt, Brandon Cutler, and Rick Knox. Rick Knox is in his ref gear, and he's like, hey, why are you in your ref gear? He's like, you hired me to be the referee for the Young Bucks, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm here for you. Matt gives him this little weird look, and then he goes away. Uh, then we get uh, CD selling his back injury from uh, Britt Baker, uh, Kazarian, and uh, Scorpio Sky comes in and they start talking about uh, being in Atlanta Airport and why is it so big and it sucks. And they kind of do their SCU bit in a different way, but just know they can't wait to get back to Southern California. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, Cass said the most hilarious thing. He says the only thing Jacksonville uh, or Daytona Beach is uh, known for is a NASCAR track. And he, he said NASCAR stands for non-athletic sports center around rednecks. I popped for that. I am, I am not like from NASCAR country, but Oklahomans love NASCAR. Uh, for a lot of a lot of Oklahomans love NASCAR, and so I remember doing. Back in the day during football season and NASCAR, they would, uh, it, it, and there was a constant fight at my job about whether to show football games or NASCAR on the TV. And it was whoever got there first. And I used to hate when NASCAR won because I hate NASCAR. Well, I don't hate it, but I hated it when I wanted to watch football. That's NASCAR funny. is one of those things. It's a very... It's similar to wrestling in some sense. It's very it's a niche audience. It's not for everybody. Um, I love NASCAR, but when Kazarian broke down NASCAR in his way with the acronym, I popped really hard. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. But NASCAR is a great sport to watch. It's exciting. It's intense. It's fun. A lot of drama, intensity. Um, it's but yeah, it's definitely not for everybody. It is definitely not for everybody. Again, I only hated NASCAR when I wanted to watch football. That was hey, it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, then we got Young Bucks. The scene that upset me. Young Bucks making fun of Cody. Uh, Nick starts it by saying, I don't need a friend. I don't need a partner. I don't need a partner. I don't need a friend. And then Matt uh, tells him to hold on. And he goes and pours fake blood over his head. And he says, I need my older brother. And then they hug. And Brandon Cutler says, I should have signed with NXT. And then walked <laughs> away. And I thought that was hilarious. Brandon Cutler is really great at delivering his one-liners. Uh, then uh, we get Private Party. And they're coming from backstage from their match in the triple threat match at um, Fighter Fest. And it looks like they get offered full-time contracts on the uh on the spot and he's like thank you and they said thank amazing red and and that's kind of how that went down and uh, private party is uh, officially a full-time member of the AEW roster i think they're great to be uh uh great to be involved uh then we see a different angle of omega attacking moxley uh what did you think of the different angle of it because it was it completely was, different from the TV angle. Yeah, it was very different. Um, I like the TV angle a little bit better. 
like this one was more, I think, if I remember right, from behind. Um, it didn't look as dominating or as intense to me as the version we previously saw on TV when it happened. Um, this one was more, I don't, I don't know, it just, I didn't really care for it, the way they shot, way, the way this was shot and the way it was aired. Um, I loved the way it was done on TV and BR Live, but this version of it and this angle was very much so, it, felt, it, it just felt flat with me. Uh, I, I I thought it was cool, but it was just like it was cool to see the different angle. But yeah, I thought the TV did the uh, I thought the TV did it justice there. It's right. just like I do like to see the backstage stuff. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it really added anything to the attack to me. But it was kind of cool having it there. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, we also got the Young Bucks packing T-shirts. Now, we were kind of talking about this when it was happening. So what were your thoughts on this part? I just thought it was really strange. I mean, I, I know they're still technically a startup company, but the money they're backed by with Tony Khan and his dad, I would have thought for sure somebody else would have been packing T-shirts and not the Young Bucks. Like, Maybe Brandon Cutler's up there doing it, or I mean, he was, but there's zero reason, no reason at all for any reason whatsoever outside of a con that the Young Bucks should ever be boxing on merchandise at this point in their career. They are, in my opinion, they should be way, not necessarily above that from like a mental standpoint, but with their job titles and what they do, they should have it they should have two other employees or something that take that spot with merchandise that just handle that. The young bucks should not be doing that. That was really weird to see them doing that. Even though we've been watching them do it for over 150 episodes on being the elite and seeing them do it at shows that we go to and things like that. And just him talk about it on Twitter and social media. It was just seeing it again after the success that they've had so far with AEW it was just like really odd to me. Like I just assumed they had other people that were going to do that. Yeah. And I have imagined it, but the, what they were trying to get over in this part is that this something that, uh, this is how much they love the wrestling business. It was two for two, for two o'clock in the morning. They had a flight in a couple hours. They were still boxing them merch that they had back from, uh, after the show. I just, I do. I definitely think it showed a different that level of dedication, and I just thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, that was the end of that episode. I thought it was a solid episode, but on these episodes where it's like a lot of recap information, you don't like get a new information. I thought we might get a match announced for Fight for the Fallen. They did show some build up for Fight for the Fallen with the whole making fun of Cody part. But uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, that was it for that. Yeah, I mean, it was it was solid. I mean, we saw them do it. We knew about the offer to a private party. We saw that, and that was really cool. Um, one thing that we didn't mention that I thought that I thought was funny and I kind of popped for was Rick Knox when he was walking around with the Young Bucks, and I, I think it was I think it was Matt that dropped something on the ground or missed the trash can, and he was just going to leave it there. And then Rick started counting like he was going to count him out if he didn't pick it up and throw it in the trash. I thought that was funny. Yeah, that was definitely uh, that was definitely funny. He did one, two, three. It just makes more sense. Uh, and and there was another part where uh, <laughs> Luchasaurus is walking around with Jungle Boy on his uh, shoulder, and they tried to go into the locker room where uh, SCU is, and he's like SCU locker room, like basically hit the bricks, and uh, Luchasaurus like, but I have a master's degree. And basically, he told him to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> he didn't yeah. care about his master's degree. Kaz, no selling the master's degree. I love that. Uh, but, yeah, that was like it for the episode. Like I said, it was a solid episode. I would like to see maybe either more matches if there's going to be announced for Fight for the Fallen. But we didn't really get that. Uh, but then we got Road to the R Road to Fighter Fallen Part 2, uh, which I guess there's only going to be three. Uh they they start with this coach Cody uh, chair shot, and um, 
And then MJF reacting by cussing everybody out and said, what do we even pay Atlas security for? Uh, and he's cussing them out and Sean Spears walks by and he calls him an asshole. And it looks like he's about to attack him. Uh, and Sean Spears is like, you want answers? Send Jim Ross. And I thought that was cool. So imagine on Fight for the Fallen this week, we might get an interview with Sean Spears and Jim Ross. We then get some highlights from Fighter Fest. Just a bunch of different like steals and slow motion shots from the uh, uh, show. There was the Young Bucks. There was Darby Allen. There was a lot of stuff there. Then we got the, the majority of the show. This was the biggest part of the show. We were talking about Brandy, and she was just basically doing a one-on-one -on -one talking session. It was just, and she was talking about uh, how she she was uh, started in figure skating, and basically in figure skating. Uh, she felt like she was athletically there, but she mentally checked out. Uh, she had mental uh, checked out the night before, and she had problems with, like, seems like low self-esteem, and she felt like it beat her before she even got to perform. Uh, what did you think about this segment? Um, it was good to see some backstory on Brandy and hear more about her past. Cause, I mean, I haven't heard a lot about that. So that was good. Um, I felt like it went on too long, though. Um, like, I, I, I think it went on about, I don't know, two to three minutes too long. Like it, it should have been a lot shorter to me. It was good to where we got the backstory and we got to see that pure emotion from her and hear her talk about how she feels that some way in the ring. But she's fighting through it. She's trying to do better. And she's trying to overcome the anxiety and things like that that goes with all of that because even us as everyday people we have those issues where it's like oh god i got to do this and you stress and things like that and we have to fight through so it's good to see them showing that with her fighting through with stuff that she's struggling with but she knows she can do it she knows she wants to do it it's good to see her kind of fight through and see all that i just i wish they would have shortened it a little bit but overall it was pretty good Yeah, I thought she was. Uh, I thought it was very compelling for Brandy. It changed the narrative of the story. Uh, it was they were kind of doing this heel general manager, heel leader of the women's division thing with Brandy, and then she changed it from it was never about Allie. She said uh, stuff about Allie because of her low self esteem, and so uh, this is about her proving she can do it, proving she can win. And like I said, it changes the whole dynamic of the match. I thought Brandy was very brave for saying this. I was like, like I, I don't know if it was just in character or this is exactly what happened in her life. And that's a good thing that I don't know if it's different or not. Uh, that means she did a really good job at it. So it actually multiplied my interest in that match uh, tenfold. And so I'm looking forward to that. Good Lord. And you know what I forgot? And this, uh, I, I'll, I guess I can add it back later. Uh, but, yeah, I'm sitting here doing the show, getting in, and it's like, oh, I don't have my notes and regular stuff in front of me that I normally have. Guess what I forgot to say? This episode of All Things Elite is brought to you by Powerslam.tv. Oh, my God. I am so sorry about that. So, yeah, I will make sure that is definitely covered. You, you, you've you definitely heard the thing before uh, yes. the, the, before the show started, so don't get me wrong. But I, I do want to say uh, this episode of Fight for uh, – this episode of All Things Elite is brought to you by Fire, uh, Power Slam TV, uh, where you can access over to 4,000 hours of content from over 110 of your favorite wrestling brands from countries all around the globe right onto your laptop and mobile device. If you use the code Social Suplex, you get the first month free. Sorry about that, boss. I didn't mean to, uh, uh, Jeremy, I didn't mean to forget that. But, again, you'll hear that part before the show starts, so it's not that. It, it, it is. It's something I'm supposed to do, but I forgot it. Sorry. Don't beat me up. Uh, yeah, so, but that was it for Fight for the Falling. Uh, now we're going to get into our Fight for the Falling preview. Now, the reason we do our preview a week in advance is that 
Fight for the Fallen is uh, we do uh, our Fight for the Fallen review directly after the show. So our preview is going to come a week earlier. We understand by doing that, sometimes we won't be able to preview some of the matches because they are very good about not announcing matches until a few days before the show. And when you sell out most of your shows, you can do that. I mean, it's it's weird to me because, you know, uh, the type of uh, the time that we're in that they would do that. But they do they do. Uh, attempt to get that, uh, you know, get away with that and maybe spark last minute ticket sales. So, uh, we got the five matches. Uh, out of the five you see on Wiki, which one are you most excited for? Um, easily Cody and Dustin versus the Bucks. All right. Well, well, let's talk about all five. Uh, to this week was announced, uh, uh, it'll be Jimmy Havoc, Darby Allen, and Joey Janela. I forgot the little catch name that they gave them. Something of destruction or vic- something. Something like that, yeah. And they'll be wrestling MJF, Sammy Guevara, and Sean Spears. I have heard complaints because Jimmy, uh, Sammy Go- I mean, Sean Spears and MJF have had beef this week, and now they're on the same team. And people saying something's wrong with the booking there. What do you think about that? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the booking at all. I love this. It's it's one of those things that's going to make – it's going to put two guys that are two of the – now two of the top heels in the company being MJF and then now Sean Spears after he went after the man, Cody. Um, it's It makes him now a top heel in the company. So it makes sense. And then Sammy is that cocky, arrogant, pretty boy, better than you – guy so it makes sense that those three are all on a team um it's gonna sh- make him it's gonna be one of two things him and mjf meaning sean spears are gonna have to work together to get through this match or their back and forth is gonna end up costing and sammy's gonna end up getting the shit kicked out of him by the other three because they're gonna be fighting on the outside and brawling to the back and not doing what they're supposed to be in their match and it's gonna get in their history or their story is gonna get in the way of the match and their goal to win that match. So I don't see there's any way that MJF and Spears and Sammy win this match. I don't think the back and forth with MJF and Spears is going to allow that to happen. Um, and I think, unfortunately, Sammy is going to take the brunt into the beating in this match because the other two guys are going to spend more time squabbling with each other. Yeah, um, I think this is definitely – Heading somewhere, and I don't know where it's going yet, which is always exciting. Uh, yeah, I think Jimmy Havoc, Darby, and Joey definitely get the win in this match. I'm hoping they feature Jimmy Havoc just a little bit more because I think he kind of got lost in the shuffle. But uh, the point, I, I think the point is to get Sean Spears over as a heel, you know, as, the, as a big challenger for uh, Cody. So I'm looking forward to how this match actually plays out. Uh, whether him and MJF like jump each other or fight. So, but uh, if I have to make a prediction, which you know that's what we're here for, I am going with Jimmy Darby and Joey looking strong in the end. Yeah, I, I think I think Darby will end up getting the win over um, over Sammy in this. Darby looked real strong at the last show, and they'll continue that momentum going into this one. All right, the next match we're going to talk about is Randy Rhodes versus Allie. Uh, I kind of went, Allie was going to win this match. That was my focus. I thought they were going to try to give her a bit of a push to be important in the women's division. But now after that video from Brandy, I'm not 100% sure. Let's find out what you think first, sir. Yeah, I, uh, on my notes, um, I initially wrote down Allie. I thought Allie was going to win this easily. I'm like you. It's, it's got me thinking a little bit more with Brandy. But with them putting this on um, the Road to show and all that with her story, and while it was, it seemed very genuine and serious, um, Brandy is also very good at character work. So I think this could be something – I'm still going with Allie, and I still think Allie wins. 
And I think they use this, her real life struggle as a way to push and make her come across as sympathetic. Because normally with your authority figures, they come across bitchy and over the top to where they're always in control. And I think, and that they dominate everything. I think in this sense, they're going to try to make and make it where Brandy is the sympathetic. Um, I'm the boss, but I'm just not quite good enough when I try to get in the ring or I'm not quite there yet, knowing that she's still very green. So I still think Allie wins this, and they're going to use it to play up Brandy as a character as well for future matches and future story arcs with her. Oh, I can definitely see that happening. Um, I think I think Brandy wins, ends up being winning by nefarious means. I think she ends up cheating to win and and basically saying you know that she played everybody and got everybody to feel sorry for her. And this is who she is, and she's a winner. I, I would, I think that might be what happens, but we will see. Uh, matchup number three. Uh, I'm gonna go with Hangman Page against Kip Sabian. Uh, are, uh on the scale of one to ten, how excited are you for this match? Uh, I might get a negative, to be honest, because um. The only thing I, I know absolutely nothing about Kip Sabian, like if I remember right, he was in the Battle Royal at Double or Nothing. Is that right? Uh, Kip Sabian was in a singles match against Sammy Guevara at Double or Nothing on the pre-show. That's right. That's right. That's right. But he just kind of showed up at random on commentary, and he's going to get the winner of the match that they had at the last show. And, of course, it was going to be Hangman, and I, I imagine they're going to use Kip to – make Hangman really good, and Hangman will make him look good, and Hangman's going to go into all out with a, no losses. But it it did nothing for me with the build. And it's like, oh, this just popped up out of nowhere, and it's like, I don't know. This match doesn't do a whole lot for me. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Uh, who you, you got Hangman winning? Yeah, Hangman. I, it's, I think Kip will get some offense in, but overall I think it's going to be a squash and Hangman gets the win. I, I, you know, I did Kip Sabian. I did a super bad character, but, you know, Hangman's supposed to be in the main event against uh, one of the biggest stars in your company in the next show. I think you needed more of a significant name for Hangman to face to help build up the cachet to where he may be able to beat Jericho. But uh, I definitely understand the situation that they were put in because of Pac. But uh, I think... Uh, I think uh, Kip Sabian's catching the old dead eye, and Hangman's walking out with the uh, win. All right. And then Agreed. the n- next match we're covering is Kenny Omega versus Shima. Uh, what do you think, sir? I think this I think this is going to be the best match on the card. Um, it's not the one I'm most excited for, but I think it's going to be the best match. I think this one has the potential to be in that four to four and a half star rating potential maybe five because uh kenny is always on top of his game anytime he goes out there he puts on a show shima the last uh two times now that i've seen him he's super impressive he can do what he wants to do in the ring he looks like there's no hold there he's super talented he's a veteran so he's gonna go out there and he's gonna put on a show and i'm really looking forward to this i don't part of me wants to pick Shima to win but I'm going to go with Kenny um, and then I think it's pretty much a guarantee that we see Moxley show up at some point either during or after this match absolutely that makes a lot of sense um, I don't think he will because I think he'll be in Japan that's possible too. Maybe he'll send a video package or interview or something, but I believe his show is on July 13th. I think the first night of the B block is on the day of that show. Gotcha. Okay. I was thinking it was a different night. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's see. But yes, I got Kenny Omega winning. I got, uh, you know, I got him and putting Shima putting on a classic match. So that works out. And the last match we got is the Kevin main event, Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes versus the Young Bucks. Looks like the Young Bucks are trying to build some tension there. Uh, what do you think about this and who you got to win? 
the the build up the bucks are definitely doing a good job on bte building it up with the the cocky arrogant and they're definitely going to be the heels going into this match and be in in the match itself um i think the bucks are going to go over um i just i and i i think one of them i think dustin takes the pin it's just going to be one of those situations to where they have a step up on on dustin um as far as their pep in their step you could say uh, it's going to be entertaining as y'all get out. It's it's the two total contradicting styles because Cody and Dustin are very similar, and then the Young Bucks are very different than them. So it's going to be fun to watch, but I think at the end of the night, the Bucks get the win. Yeah, I could definitely see uh, the Bucks getting the win here. I mean, it's fully what I'm expecting. I expect another five and a half star classic from Cody because he's a part of this match. But I honestly think the match might end in some kind of schmoz with Sean Spears getting involved or interfering. I don't think it's going to be a DQ, but I think that's what's going to cause the Bucks to win. That I could see that. like Maybe him and MJF are getting into it, and they brawl to the outside, and it distracts Cody, and they get him with a roll-up or something. something like, I could see something like that happening. Yeah, that would definitely make sense, as in then no one loses their momentum. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, so looking forward to Fight for the Fallen. It's on Bleacher Report Live next week for free. Uh, it doesn't really show a show time, but I imagine the sh- uh, pre show starts between 5 and 6. Uh, this has been a very, very short episode. So I, I, I want to say, like I said, I just wanted to get something out there. I just wanted to make sure that y'all know I am trying to be consistent with you every week uh but next week well i believe i'll have amy on for the review it'll be just as energetic and passionate as it always is uh ryan uh yeah how excited are you for fight for the fallen i'm looking forward to it i'm not like over the top excited but it's going to be a good show it's going to be solid they're going to go out there and they're going to put on another show consistent with what they've been doing it's going to be fun there'll be there'll be parts that i know i enjoy there'll be parts that i'm probably not so sure about um <clears throat> because i am i am very critical and um the things that i do and don't like so i'm sure it's, it's not going to be like a perfect show to me like a lot of other people may think it is but it's going to be good it's going to be fun and i look forward to talking about it when we talk on our on our show yeah, and we're definitely going to talk about it on our show again. Uh, just putting us over around the ring. All your podcast networks, Google, Apple, all that stuff. But definitely be following this show, All Things Elite, on the social suplex. Follow us on Twitter, at AT Elite Pod. Send any emails to allthingselitepod at gmail.com. I haven't done that in a while. But uh, make sure, uh, we, like I said, we just got through watching the G1. Uh, we got to hang with our friends from Keeping It Strong Style, also on the social suplex. Listen for their review from being live in attendance. Uh, Josh is one of the smartest people on earth. Uh, then you want to definitely, uh, after you listen to that show, check out our boy uh, Damon McDonald and uh, on the Super J Cast on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. So yeah, follow yeah, definitely follow us on Twitter. We'll get your tweets out. I am thankful for all the people I got to meet. I got to meet Megan, and I got to meet uh, I got to meet Rachel Patton. I follow her on Twitter. I didn't even realize it. She's awesome. And the girls from Georgia, they're called the Georgia Girls. That's what they call them. Uh, I, I do apologize, or the Georgia crew, if I don't remember everyone's names. I met about 50 to 100 people over the last two days, so my brain was broken. So I do apologize for that, but I definitely plan on being friends and getting to know everybody and seeing you at events uh, as much as we can. But it's it was we've had a really really good time. Uh, got to meet Scott Norton from New Japan Wrestling. Uh, Ryan got a picture with Kevin Kelly. It was just uh, really a really a good time. Uh, you got anything else, Ryan? I do not. I do not. 
I uh, also I was out of town, so I got my steak, egg, and cheese bagel from McDonald's. If you've never had a steak, egg, and cheese bagel from McDonald's, do it because they're delicious. But for Ryan, uh, thank you for being on the show with me, entertaining me for a few minutes so I can get a show out. And uh, and uh, f- this is Floyd. I want to thank you all. Please send in your questions next week. We will be live tweeting doing the show. So right, like I said, after we live tweet, we're going to get a show recorded, get it and upload it. I think this is the shortest show we've ever recorded. But, hey, we, I, like I said, I just wanted to definitely do something. I thank you all for listening to all things elite Uh, and i want to say no matter how this world gets you whether it's life work or school always do your best to be elite